Were people really afraid of the Babadook? I mean, he had a hat. He was cute. Um, in any case, we're going to talk about coding now. Uh, we're, we're almost done, and coding is something that you're going to end up doing in Bash semi-frequently. It's Coding makes things really easy. Um, let's look at where we are. We're in the writer's directory. Okay, that's fine. Um, let's... So, first thing I want to do is just show you a few things you can do. A equals, uh, from echo A. Echo dollar sign A. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, it's a variable. It's got stuff in it. Yeah. That's, you can't clean that stuff out. Uh, that's permanent. No. Um, bash has variables, and you can put stuff in the variables. A smart thing to do. So let me show you something else. What if A equals uh, texts slash, and uh, I want to echo A. Great. What if I want to ls A? Hey, that's great. Look at ls the texts directory. What if I want to ls A? I want to ls the ttt in that directory. Well, that what, what what did that do? It didn't do anything. I what it did was it ls this directory. Why did it ls this directory? Because what I just asked it to do is ls on the variable called att, and there is no variable att. If I want to combine them. I have to put A inside curly braces. Now, I know I've been totally cavalier over the prior, however many times we've done this, about saying brackets and braces and everything, and I apologize. Not really, not sincerely at least, but I do apologize verbally. And the point is that uh, if you put variables inside braces, curly braces, then, boom, you can ls, you can actually ls and see what's in directories. So I, I just looked inside A, T, 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 and you get that if I echo this, I'm gonna get that. Whereas if I echo this, I get nothing. Because this one took the variable A and then expanded it and concatenated T, T, T onto it. Whereas this one took the variable A, T, 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 and there's nothing in that variable. And in the directory texts .ttt, there is that. So there we go. That works. So there, I just put information to a variable. Why would you ever need to do this? Well, there's a bunch of reasons. Um, if you are scripting in Bash, this is what you do. You put stuff in variables, and then you've got the variables. Why would I be scripting in Bash? Sometimes you do want to write Bash scripts. Sometimes um, it's weird because as data scientists or analysts, we are not usually functioning as sysadmins. Uh, even the machine learning engineers typically aren't doing that. But uh, if you go look in a complicated Bash profile or you go, uh, you'll find Bash scripts all over the place. Typically for running what you're trying to run in production, this isn't what you want to do. And I don't think there's going to be that many IT people listening to this because they need to know Linux on a very different level than this. Um, but if there are people who are doing hybrid jobs and need to create bash scripts, well then great, you can create a bash script and do all this stuff. Um, however, why would you need to use a variable? Well, I'm going to start telling you about for loops. So bash has for loops and the for loops are easy. So let's ls sgms. Great. Okay. What if I just want the number in the SGMs? How would I get that number? I, okay, that's, I'm not really sure. What I could first do is, actually, what if I wanted to do something to each file in SGMs? Uh, and it wasn't, and I wanted to do something complicated to it. Like I wanted to, I wanted to head dash one that file and put it into something else. So I wanted to, head dash one sgm star into uh, new thing last new thing okay that that worked great okay but what if i wanted to then pipe that into something and do something different with it per file or whatever um um, it's hard coming up with an example right now on the fly, but there are there are lots of times in which you're going to want to do multiple things at once and stringing together things in one long line might not accomplish what you want it to accomplish. For that, there's for loops for file in. And now I'm going to teach you something else. Before I do this, I'm going to show you 
uh, echo a, cool. A equals dollar parentheses ls uh, sgms. Cool. Echo a. There's all of the files in sgms. A is now an array of all of these things. I think you can do echo a zero. Um, I don't remember how you do. I honestly don't remember how you do this. Is it that? No. Is it this? I just don't remember at all. Now I know I know this can be done, and I apologize for not remembering how to do this. You can dereference things. You can use. There are arrays in Linux. Uh, they I I use them so rarely that I just can't remember how to use them right now. So, but you can absolutely look at individual ones of these. But what if I did the following? What if I did for file in dollar a. do echo file uh, echo high comma file done okay this is a for loop you could echo high comma file echo no there I've echoed a few things so the basic structure of a for loop is for the variable you're filling in uh, a list of things a is a list basically do and then a series of statements, which I'm separating by semicolons because I'm doing it all in one line, and then you end it with done. There we go. There, right there. Here's all the files in A. And it's echoing them and followed by no. So it's doing exactly what I asked it to do. So now you can see how you might want to use for loops because you might want to put in new lines, you might want to do, there's all sorts of things you might want to do. Um, and here I'm going to, instead of doing A, I'm going to do this for file in ls texts. Boom. Right there. It went through texts, got all the files, and then file this variable. It got all the file names, and file is actually going through it, and now it's just referencing file and giving you their names. Cool. That's a for loop. So congrats, now you can, so why do I want to do that? Well, what if I want to do like, and I know this sounds weird, but for file in uh, ls texts, do grep file, file done. I'm grepping the file name in each file. Um, it says no such file or directory. Why is it saying that? Because I didn't do the ls properly. Um, I'm going to echo file to start out with just to show you what's going on. Echo file. Oops. Oh, no, no. I put the do in the... Eh, I'm stupid. I put the do. Got to do. Got to do the do. There we go. So note that these files are all located in texts. And ls has returned these files without the text's substring, you know, pref prefix onto it. So it's trying to grep some string in these files. I'm going to make it more obvious too. Grep uh, in a file. And it doesn't know where this file is. Why? Because I need to go texts file like that. And then all of a sudden, bang, right there. And I'm not going to echo the file. I'm going to just do the following. I'm going to go... I'm going to just grep for a uh, in these files. Boom. Um, and it says, oh, that one's a directory. Okay, well, that's fine. I, you know, that's that happens. Uh, what if I grep a and I want to grep dash il? So this will return all the files that contain an a, uppercase or lowercase. Boom. And there they are. So cool. I Yes, you can do this all at once with a star. You can absolutely star complete all this. But the fact is that you can see how if I want to do multiple things, if I want to do one thing, fill a variable, put that variable into something else, read that into a file, write that file to something else. If you if I want to like use several steps in a row, a for loop would be really useful. So uh, that's what this is for. And here I'm going to show you as well, if I ls text with a star, and I echo file, and I'm not going to put text slash file, I'm just going to do file, boom. Now, if you put the star in there, it will prefix the texts onto each one of them, because that's how ls works, and so I don't have to prefix it here. 
However, if I then want the name of the file, I can't get the name of the file because it's got a prefix on it. So I'd have to use a Linux command like base name. So here's a fun thing for file in ls text do new file name equals base name file echo file echo new file name move file to uh, new file underscore new file name. All right, that's crazy, but what am I doing here? What is this doing? It is looking for every file in texts. It's going to run a command called base name, which is going to strip all the directories off of that thing and just give you the name of the file and put that in a variable called new file name. For everyone, it's going to echo the file name, the original one, and the new file name. And then it's going to move. I don't want to move. Move is a terrible thing. Don't. Oh, that's a bomb. Don't do that. Copy the file into this new, into a file called new file underscore and then new file name. Enter. All right. Cool. Uh, it did that. So, and it noted it picked up directories and everything else. So, what does this mean? So, great. Uh, you see how it, okay, text, read me, read me. So basically, this was the first file, text.star, and then the new file name was read me. And in fact, I'm going to do that just to be, I'm going to do this. I'm going to you know, echo uh, original name, file, echo extra crispy name. New file name. There, good. That's a little easier to read. Original name, text, read me dot text. Or extra crispy name, read me dot text. Original name, this. Extra crispy name, this. So you see it's stripping the directory structure from the file. That's what base name does. But what is the, did this copy work? Well, that's fine. Let's see. Boom. Here's, I'm going to LL right now. And you're going to see, and I can't expand the stupid thing because I'm recording in a fixed size window. But you can see that you have in this directory a bunch of files called new file which were just written right now you know here and they're identical to the files in texts and it wrote them all blah 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 and they're all exactly the same size but they are those file names with a prefix attached to them great um i don't know another way of doing this other than a for loop i'm sure you can i'm sure there's a very clever way of doing this but i don't know another way of doing this and so ls new file star Here's all the new file, and I'm just going to remove those because I don't need that. Good. I'm back to the original directory. Uh, L new thing. Arm that. Good. Uh, RM Reuters. Good. Cool. So that was a for loop.